हेलो फ्रेंड वेलकम टू मरीन इंजीनियरिंग हब दिस योर नरेटर रवि गुप्ता टुडे वी गोना टॉक अबाउट द कंपोनेंट ऑफ द एचपीएस हाइड्रोलिक पावर सप्लाई कंपोनेंट सो इन टुडे टॉपिक आई विल मेनली कवर अबाउट द डिजाइन ऑफ द एक्सियल पिस्टन पंप व्हिच इज बीन इंजन ड्रिवन एंड how it is fixed and after that we will see the startup pump and how it will be installed and then again some detail about the axial pump and how it is been attached with the chain wheel drive arrangement so this video going to be interesting please remain tuned till last this is the part 2 of the hydraulic power supply component in part 1 i have explained how the hydraulic power supply is developing the hydraulic pressure okay now let's see about the hps component engine driven axial piston pump so basically this axial piston pump is consist of a swas placed arrangement which is been driven and hence suction and discharge port is been developed so basically this is the piston and due to the axial movement the one suction side and one pressure pressurized side will be generated and depending upon that suction and discharge port will be created this movement of the swas plate will decide which port will be suction which port will be discharge okay so here right now as the swas plate is like this so this port here the piston will be moving in a down direction and it will take suction and here the piston moving will be moving in the up direction and therefore we will discharge it so this is how the axial piston pump generate pressure now this is the ahead movement as you can see as the direction of rotation is like this and the swas plate is in this position so what is basically happening this port is in suction okay and this port is in discharge is in pressurized side so this port is suction and this port is discharge now as the direction of rotation is change so here you can see now as the swas plate is here this port will be suction and this port will be discharge okay now let's see how the startup pump work so basically when the engine is stop and if engine is in auto mode after the engine is stop the engine will stop the both pump which are building up the pressure but in manual mode we have to manually control the pump pressure and we have to shut out the shut out the pump so what i have written here in automatic mode stop at finish with engine master pump running at engine standby both pump are running during the pressure build up stop via timer at a specific engine rpm default 15% of mcr so basically what is happening as the startup pump will help to develop the pressure this pump will help to develop the pressure at the time of starting will automatically be shut out when the engine will reach 15% of the mcr and it will be taken over by the engine driven axial piston pump okay now in case of control failure of a pump the swas plate will be forced to maximum capacity in ahead direction so if someone asks you that what will happen in case of pump failure so this will happen the swas plate will move in a maximum capacity ahead direction 
pump number one is controlled by ACU one, number two pump by ACU two, and number three pump by ACU three. Pump number one, two, three have their own sensor for system pressure and controlled by ACU. Okay, and pump four and five controlled by binary signal either maximum capacity in ahead or astern direction. Number four is controlled by ECU A and number five is by ECU B. So, one thing I want to say you that in this diagram, here we are seeing three pump. Pump one is controlled by ACU1, pump 2 by ACU2, pump 3 by ACU3. But if the other two pump is provided, then pump 4 will be controlled by ECUA and pump 5 will be controlled by ECUB. Each of the individual pump has its own suction pressure monitoring which will detect and will isolate the system in case of pump failure and will move the source plate to maximum ahead direction. So let's see. All pump have a sensor for suction pressure. If the pressure is low or all sensor are failing, a shutdown will be activated. Okay, it's very clear. Now let's see the startup pump. As you can see, this is a startup pump having inlet from here and it is passing through the pump and developing the pressure and the outlet is from here. So for this pump, the oil is coming, pressure is being developed and is coming from here. For this pump, the oil is coming, the pressure is being developed and is going through here. So this is how the pump pressure is being developed and pump pressure is relieved by a relief valve in case of malfunctioning at a pressure of 175 bar a drain is provided here okay in case you have to drain the system the drain is provided here okay and this is the electrical motor if you want to see in the engine diagram this is how it looks as you can see this is a two pump this is the relief valve okay and as you can see this two this is the discharge okay this is the discharge this is the discharge and this is the this is the suction this is the suction so now this is the axial piston pump this is how it look like and this is how it will from here it will develop the pressure and from other end will take the suction now we will talk about the engine modification okay we will talk about the engine modification which has been done from ke 80 me series to 98 series means as the engine has progressed a modification has been done let's see what modification had been done basically what is done the pressure of the axial piston pump is increased from 210 bar to 300 bar so what advantage do we get by increasing the working pressure by increasing the working pressure result in three things the pump size is reduced from 355 cubic capacity to 255 cubic capacity and only three pump is now required so earlier suppose in while developing 210 bar we required five pump now we have increased the pressure 300 bar so that the pump capacity is redu reduced as the pump size is sorry not pump capacity the pump size is reduced to 250 cc from 355 and now the number of pump requirement is also reduced to three and same pipe and hose dimension is provided so how it is happen which we can this three thing we can explain by a relationship between the flow and pressure equation as we know pressure is equal to flow sorry power is equal to flow into pressure so 
as the power generated by pump is same and as we have increased the pressure so we can decrease the flow so basically we are able to reduce the pump size because the flow has been decreased as the power generation being remain same and pressure is been increased therefore as the flow is reduced therefore we are reducing the pump size and hence we are cutting the number of pump required so increasing the pressure has given us this advantage now as you can see this is the accumulator which is been provided on the top of the pump and this is the three engine driven pump and generally for developing a pressure of up to 250 bar we require two pump but we are providing one more pump for redundancy purpose that if any one fit still two will be operational for carrying out the function and this is the gearbox now let's see here as you can see this is the gearbox of the inside of the HPS system okay and this is the gear which has been coming from the main engine shaft okay if you see from near this is the this wheel and this is this wheel this wheel are provided two in number two row of gear one is spare very important you see one is provided for spare okay and this is the this gear okay now this is one we are calling connection wheel this one we are calling output wheel okay and the gear ratio is 12 is to 1 means we are increasing the pressure up to 12 times with that gear ratio okay now the moment compensator is provided like this as you can see if it is chain driven the pump drive it provided with a moment compensator here and here and it is being attached to this chain here and this is the moment component one two which you are seeing here this and this is this one and this one and this one is being driven by a chain and on the other end of the chain this wheel drive this gear drive is attached this gear drive is attached which are two in number and this is been provided to a connection wheel to a output wheel and this whole conversion is in the ratio of 12 is to 1 okay now a closer look this one is the chain drive this one is the step up gear and it is connected to the hydraulic pump now we will see this connection as you can see this is the pump end this is the gear end means this end this one is the this end gear end and this one is a pump end which is been connected this pump end is connected with the gear end through a high friction dish and this attachment okay this attachment is provided and this is how if we take a very closer look this is how the engine driven hydraulic power supply is been provided very clear picture okay so now i hope the attachment of axial piston is clear and why it is provided three number it is provided so that to give one as a redundancy that if one fail the two still can function now what is the advantage if we increase the pressure you can say that we can reduce the flow and we can reduce the pump size we can reduce the number of pump required by keeping the same pipe and hose dimension and if anyone asks you how the engine startup pump work and when it is cut off you will say 15 percent of the mcr and how the source plate movement is been carried out you can draw this diagram and you can explain it and how it has been attached and how the pressure side and suction side is decided you can say and how it is attached it is clear now if you like the video please do hit the like button and please do subscribe and please do share 
प्लीज इनकरेज अस सो दैट वी कैन ब्रिंग दिस टाइप ऑफ वीडियो टू यू एंड सो दैट यू कैन आल्सो लर्न एंड यू कैन आल्सो बूस्ट अप आवर कॉन्फिडेंस सो दैट वी कंटिन्यू टू डू आवर एफर्ट प्लीज टू शेयर दिस वीडियो ऑन योर व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप एंड ऑन योर टेलीग्राम ग्रुप ऑन योर फेसबुक ग्रुप सो दैट मोर एंड मोर मरीन पर्सनल कैन कम to know about this channel and can we can come to this platform and we can have a question and answer session have a good dear friend be safe in your home take care of yourself thank you